new veterinary school could be coming to the High Plains. We'll take a look at how the people of Amarillo feel about the possible addition next. Plus, a cancer research program has provided billions of dollars for prevention in the past eight years. How the next legislative session could impact that program in just a moment. It feels a little bit more tropical outside with humidity and a few showers still left in the area. We'll talk about our afternoon rain chances coming up. Live from your local news leader, KAMR Local 4's Today in Amarillo in high definition starts now. Good Wednesday morning. It's August 22nd. I'm Angelina Perez. Thanks for waking up to Today in Amarillo. We'll have more on those stories coming up in just a bit. But first, let's look at your weather with meteorologist Chris Martin. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Angelina. Good morning, folks. Hopefully, you're getting some rain this morning. We have some scatter showers around the area. Nothing here in downtown. Though it's trying to come this way. Let's take it over to our downtown tower camera. Looking back over the interchange at the moment, we have a few storms off to the west of us uh, here in downtown. Around 67 degrees with winds from the southeast at 11 miles per hour. Still a little bit of energy out there left over from yesterday to allow for some of these showers to continue on. Some rain out towards, say, uh, Bushland and Adrian and Vega, trying to head to the west side of town and more rain up towards the north and west. Now, for the latter part of the day, we'll see another chance for thunderstorms in the afternoon with high temperatures in the 80s and the 90s. 90 here in Amarillo, and we'll see how long that chance rain lasts for the rest of this week in just a few short minutes. Right now, we'll send it back to Angelina. Thank you, Chris. Amarillo Matters, a local political action committee, conducted a poll to gauge support for Amarillo's future veterinary school. We are your local election headquarters. The school would expand educational opportunities in Amarillo and make the Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center the only place in the nation to house a medical, pharmacy, and vet school. Out of 302 likely voters in Amarillo, 93% support the opening of the Texas Tech Veterinary School of Medicine, 3% oppose the school, and 4% are undecided. Democratic candidate for Texas Attorney General Justin Nelson was in Amarillo yesterday. Nelson was at Hofrout Steakhouse to talk to locals. His campaign is focused on providing access to health insurance, fighting corruption, and the opioid crisis. I was very impressed. Um, he didn't really talk a lot about himself. He talked about what he, how he feels for the state of Texas, that he wants justice for all. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. Um, he talked a lot about justice and integrity and fairness. He is running against the current Attorney General, Republican Ken Paxton. Texas lawmakers' next legislative session will likely decide the fate of a cancer prevention and research program. It's called CPRIT, Cancer Prevention Research Institute of Texas. Healthcare advocates yesterday morning shared the impact of CPRIT's grants on their organizations in Austin. CPRIT says some of its grantees have other sources of funding, but CPRIT provides a huge chunk of their resources. The grantees have done a lot of work to improve their health care systems, the delivery of their preventive services. They've trained a lot of people in terms of uh, community health workers and other professionals. CPRIT has provided nearly $2 billion in grants for research, prevention, and product development since 2010. The future of CPRIT depends on whether lawmakers decide to continue funding it next legislative session. For related headlines, head over to myhighplains.com. The Loft Church has officially purchased the old Midnight Rodeo building. Officials with the church say they plan to renovate the building over the next six months. They expect to move in sometime next year. Midnight Rodeo closed their doors back in September 2017. The people of Cactus will no longer need to wait for an ambulance to come from Dumas. The Texas Department of State Health Services granted the City of Cactus a Texas Emergency Medical Service First Responders Organization. This means that all of Moore County will have EMT licensed personnel. Current members of this organization are made up of made up from the Cactus Fire Department, Moore County Emergency Management, and the Moore County Sheriff's Office. The Prince Street overpass in Clovis is closed in both directions for construction. There's no set day for the overpass to open, but Clovis officials say the construction will continue for an extended period of time. North and southbound traffic in the area is, are encouraged to use the Norris Street crossing or whole overpass. 
Technology is entering the classroom at Ascension Academy as the school year starts. That's in today's Heart of the High Plains. Every high school student at Ascension received a Dell Chromebook thanks to Happy State Bank. The school tells us the technology will be beneficial to the students in and out of the classroom. More engaged. Um, they're able to see concepts in a, a real-time situation where we can make adjustments and they can see how in the math class graphs and things like that move immediately. 150 Chromebooks were given to the students for the school year. Happy State Bank says giving the donation helps set an example for the students so they can see how important giving back to the community is. It's now 6.05, so it's time to take a look at your weather. Here's meteorologist Chris Martin. Thank you so much, Angelina, and good Wednesday morning, everyone. Trying to get some rain out there at the moment. Most of the rain off to the western parts of the Panhandle. Some thunderstorms left over from last night. And the winds produced by some of the storms in our northwestern counties have actually helped to pop up a few more, which is what's going on in the western parts of the Texas Panhandle. Some heavier showers stretching from Vega back up towards, uh, say, Boyce Ranch, Valley de Oro as well. We're getting some of that light rain northwest of Hereford. A few spotty showers around around uh, Friona and Dimmit, that is, and the occasional lightning and thunder, but that would be the only thing severe. This activity slowly trying to drift towards Amarillo. Might have a few sprinkles here in downtown over the next hour or so. And most of this activity is starting to die out. We do have some storms back towards Texas Line, northwest of Dalhart and south of Clayton, very quickly moving on into the northwestern Texas Panhandle and also kind of weakening at this point. Other spotty showers down to the south and east that have popped up uh, from outflow winds north of Silverton. A few showers around Memphis and Wellington, back towards Childress and uh, Lily Lake uh, southeast of Clarendon at the moment. This activity slowly drifting off towards the south and southeast while we continue on with a mostly cloudy sky for the rest of the Texas Panhandle. As a matter of fact, we did have some severe weather last night. An 18 mile an hour wind gust reported up towards Keys where they also had half dollar size hail to be a, 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 a diameter of an inch and a quarter. We had a 61 mile an hour wind gust reported in Dalhart and a little bit less than that in Boise City as well. As some thunderstorms did pop up fairly strong across Cimarron County and leftovers of those have since moved on into Kansas and have weakened considerably. Now we'll look for the possibility of a few more strong straight line winds and some large hail for this afternoon. A few of those storms popping up, uh, but not very widespread today. On the ag, for, uh, ag forecast, that is the drying potential is back to the very high category. Pan evaporation at 38 hundredths of an inch, and our relative humidity falls off to 38 percent in the afternoon time. So we'll be muggy yet again today. Not too dry out there for sure, and plenty of moisture available for thunderstorms in the afternoon. We'll see a few spotty showers trying to pop up around Amarillo and back to the east as well after 4 p.m. with the better chance for rain across our northern counties once more tonight with temperatures in the 80s and 90s today dropping off to the 60s for tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at our seven-day forecast and that possibility of storms still back with us for tomorrow and again on Friday as well and into Saturday at least across our northern counties. A few hit or miss storms really for the remainder of the week as high temperatures get back into the mid and upper 90s. Actually Thursday will be more breezy in the afternoon time. Winds upwards of 20 to 25 miles per hour gusting over 30 at times. And then for the weekend ahead, we'll actually get more breezy winds returning Sunday into early next week. High temperatures still pretty toasty and staying well above average. You can check that seven day forecast and our weather graphics anytime at myhighplains.com. It is 68 degrees and we'll send it back to Angelina. Thank you, Chris. It's now 6.07 and still ahead. If you have some extra time on your hands, it may be time to start a new project. Our very own Brittany Trumpy is showing us how you can make your own end tables next.
from your local news leader. You're watching Angelina Perez and meteorologist Chris Martin. Today in Amarillo in High Definition continues. Welcome back, everyone. I have Brittany here with me, and she's a little bit casual today. <laughs> We're doing something different, Britt. Yes. You are crafty. You know how to build things. You know how to make things, and you like doing it, yes. too. Yes. So growing up, my two grandparents, one of them, she always decided why buy it when you can make it. Mm -hmm. And my other grandfather, he worked a lot with wood. Okay, so, so you kind of picked up the skill. Yeah, so I kind of like to just kind of make stuff instead of going out to buy stuff. So I actually made this table here, yes. and I'm going to show you how I made another table over here. But uh, so this table over here, uh, this is my live edge table. Um, it basically, it was just a piece of scrap wood that I found. Okay. I sanded down the edges. I used some stain on it, sealed it with some clear spray paint, and then I bought the hairpin legs and attached it to the bottom. Um, okay. That table online, tables that are similar to it with the live edge, cost a couple hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. I made it for about 70. You can't beat that. So you can't beat it. And then I have an even cheaper option. Maybe you don't have a random piece of wood laying around at <laughs> home. Uh, you could actually make this table. So this one I made uh, yesterday afternoon, actually, with my mom. She was coming to visit me. And this is just a plant stand from Lowe's. It was about $12. Mm -hmm. um, I just spray painted it gold, but it was originally black. Personally, okay. I like the gold, but the black looks good too. And then I just bought this piece of wood from Lowe's. It was also about seven dollars, and I actually already stained half of it. This is the half we're going to do right now. Um, it basically, it's just really simple. You just have the stain sitting here in this little clear, or this little glass guy. And I like to use a sponge. Yeah, it's easier um, that way. Because I feel like I have better control of it. And then you just do it in streaks. Um, the stain dries really quick, which is really nice. As you can see, it's already kind of dry right there. And you just go back and forth and apply it. And it's just really simple. Um, in the next segment, I'm going to show you guys how to attach it to the stand, which is also pretty simple. But mm -hmm. this table was $30. Yeah, you can't, I mean, if you go to, you know, a, a home decor shop, it's going to cost you maybe 100, 150, 200 bucks for, yeah, for a little end table when you could just make one. Exactly. And it's fun. And also, it's like a conversation piece when people come inside your house and they see like a table. They're yeah. like, what is that? So you maybe on the side you can start doing this and making us some tables, right? You know, if somebody went home wants to we buy one. We just have one. to come up with a Trumpy tables. Yeah. Does that work? If you have like a good name <laughs> <laughs> for me, let us know because we can't come up with one. Yes. So yeah. Alrighty. Well, we'll be back with Britt here in just a little bit to finish off this table. And for now, we're going to send it over to Chris for a look at your weather. I got Trumpy's handy.